Imagine growing up in a country where survival is your only goal, not just financially, but physically. Doing all that you can to avoid gang violence and corruption that seems to fill every area of life, including the government and schools. Imagine living in a country where most children do not attend school beyond the sixth grade unless they attend private school. According to NBC News, over 200,000 Honduran children stopped attending school between 2014 and 2017, and there are 850,000 children who do not attend school or work. Imagine a place where school buildings have been destroyed and 83 teachers murdered between 2009 and 2014. Imagine growing up and seeing your siblings and cousins leave to go to the United States, some never to return. You see, I'm from Honduras, where there is rampant violence and gang activity, corruption and poverty. When I was 13 years old, my mom was kidnapped for ransom. I felt helpless. I wanted to help, but what could I do? My dad was doing everything that he could. I was afraid that I was going to lose my mom. While my mother was able to return home, others were not as lucky. In 2014, according to the U.S. Customs and Border Protection, nearly 70,000 unaccompanied children arrived in the U.S.-Mexico border, and another 60,000 arrived in 2016, making the two highest years between 2012 and 2016, in which unaccompanied minors arrived at the border. I recall when I made the decision to come to the United States. I was afraid. I was concerned about fitting in, whether people would think that I'm here illegally, and I feared rejection. While I entered the United States legally, there are thousands of children who feel the same as they are seeking refuge, but are denied because of inaccurate classification that labels them as unaccompanied alien children, rather than refuge-seeking children. This distinction is critical to how they are treated, their well-being, and whether they are likely to be returned to the very conditions from which they were seeking refuge. We, kept in, we keep inheriting the need for better opportunities. The need to escape violence, corruption, abuse, gangs, lack of economic and academic advancements. We need to address the problem from the source. Instead of investing in the borders, instead of investing in the walls, the United States should be providing not just humanitarian aid to Honduras and other similar countries, but also financial guidance and a shift in government and security. Children are our future, and we need to start setting an example that we wish they would follow. We need them to inherit hope, love, compassion, not fear and hatred. We need them to remember that those small, careless, and playful children are the primary, primary heirs of our ways. And if we do not answer the call to support the most vulnerable population by addressing issues of policy supporting unaccompanied minors from surrounding countries and creating true comprehensive immigration reforms that include protecting unaccompanied minors, we will continue to err in our ways.